Hey everybody, what's up? It is Doug Welker, uh, accompanied here by Josh Rhodes, another episode of Pulling Trigger. Sorry we didn't have an episode last week, kind of got busy, so we're here today, we're going to make up for it. We have ProMod discussion. Josh, you want to say what's up? Hey, what's going on everybody? Sorry we missed last week, but we're going to make up for it this week. We got the high-powered trucks we're talking about today. Yep, we are going to talk ProMod trucks and kind of the final class that we're talking about for our preview of the 2021 racing season, which starts actually next week. It's crazy. We're only a week away. Yes, there'll be new content here, new races on uh, Trigger King. If you go to our Facebook page, you can see uh, we posted some of the race information, but um, should be fun. I can't wait to get out there, Josh. I know you've raced throughout this winter in various other clubs. I have not, so I am dying to get my trucks in the dirt. Yeah, I've been dying to get my pro mods back out. All the racing I've been doing has been sport mod and retro. It's not been anything really high-powered. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, number one, getting the LNTs out and seeing how they do on an re- actual racetrack. And number two, just running the trucks again. I miss the high-powered stuff. Yeah, the because, yeah, everybody's running uh, the, the winter classes. The winter uh, clubs you've been running with are pretty much all sport mod and retro, right? So the, the, you know, the pro mod they, stuff. They don't have enough space inside there to be able to run a truck that's going to sky out 40 feet. Yeah. <laughs> We're lucky that we got a spot. I actually talked to John today about track prep for next week. We're hoping the weather is going to be okay so we can have um, good track. We don't have to water stuff down and we can actually get the power down. So let's talk pro mods here. So if you guys are curious out there what the pro mods are, I mean, those are typically, these are the high power trucks. Basically it's kind of our unlimited class to where I won't say there are no rules because they're obviously they got to be a solid axle monster truck, but this is where you see the mod quads. And basically, if you like our freestyle videos and you see the crazy stuff the trucks are doing, nine times out of ten, the crazy stuff is a pro mod truck. Um, Josh is one of the purveyors of said carnage with his uh, his digger truck, his bad company. He's got several trucks, but over the years, he and Bob C have put on sort of the the clinics every month normally with the uh, the freestyle trucks. You guys have broken a ton of parts. And that's so that's just the freestyle portion. Let's talk about a pro mod. Josh, you want to talk about the actual pro mod class? What makes it a pro mod? Well, what makes it a pro mod is the fact that you can stick just about any high powered brushless combo you can fit into the truck and send it. Basically, (laughs) the truck is so high powered. It's more like what we base it after is what you would normally see on, say, Monster Jam today. Or you would see out at some other uh, independently ran shows where you see the trucks just skying out and going as fast and as hard as they can over some obstacles, which is what ProMod is necessarily based after. When I first started, there was no brushless systems that were really available for a dual clod buster setup. I mean, you had you had the sensorless systems out there, but nobody was really running them. So our Pro Mods were actually sport mods. I had 17 turn motors in my trucks. Speed gems, uh, right? Or were you yeah, it was uh, Trinity days? speed gems that I had in there. And I thought, man, I I know that we can get faster out there. So I would experiment and I would go down. I think I went down to a nine turn motor at one point and that actually melted a battery pack that I had. That was before <laughs> lipos. But uh, yeah, ProMod to me has always been, I mean, it's what I started out with. It's what I've always felt more comfortable with when you've got that extra little bit of speed that you can push into a corner and actually make the rear end come around. That's where I excel, and that's where a lot of other people excel. Yeah, the really, in a pro mod truck, there's a couple ways to where power isn't a problem at all. And really, oh, gearing, no. gearing doesn't matter either because the power these trucks have on tap, they just have so much power. You're never going to, at least in a race, you're never going to, use it all necessarily to where that's just not the that's not the competition the competition is building it and tuning it to make sure it can stay together exactly you know? the one number one question i get asked about my pro mod truck what gearing are you running stock a lot of people cannot believe that that i'm running a stock 13 tooth pinion in my modified clods but that's really all you need if you go any faster your truck's going to end up three miles down the road <laughs> before you even get to a corner i mean well, now what motors though let's talk about that what motors are yours oh uh, well i was running 6.5 t Gropners for quite some time now i've got the 6900 kv castles in there okay so Which i and i've run i remember um i had those 6900s years ago the castles i run a 5.5 five turn in my pro mod i only have one pro mod my big squid boss right now i hope to uh, i'm actually building a rotten apple three truck in the process i hope to have that out at some point but that's going to be another crazy powered you know the in the six or five turns whatever brushless so again it's just ludicrous power 
These are the trucks too uh, in this class that there's a battle between the clods and the shaft trucks. Uh, mm -hmm. Clods do seem to in this class though, a lot of times to kind of rule the day because the power, I mean, I don't feel underpowered um, in my shaft truck. It's just the clods for whatever reason, I guess maybe it's because you and Bob are running them and you guys are sort of the top guys in this class. The clods with just that insane power <laughs> that you guys have. It's and the, the insane power and the way that the clod gets through the corners. It's got a little bit of an advantage, I believe, going into the corners. You might say that, oh, the SMT 10's got a, it's got a higher turning radius. That's not necessarily a good thing sometimes. It's good on a really tight track, but if it's a, a little bit wider of a corner, when you hit the brakes to go into a corner with a clod, you can bring that rear end around a lot slower. And that's going to help you exit a corner a lot better than, say, an SMT 10 that's kind of turning in a lot sharper. And I think the weight, the weight really helps the clods too, because I know every once in a while I get pegged as a fill-in driver because I have one pro mod truck and I've driven your grave digger before. And I think a couple other guys at one point when they've needed somebody to fill in on their truck. And I'm always shocked at the clods and how heavy they are. And they feel heavy in a good way though. Mm -hmm. Like all that power, well, one, you don't have torque twist and you've got all this weight to get all that power to the ground. So they just take off like a bat out of hell. You know, not that the other ones don't, but like my big squid boss truck on a shaft truck, you got to be careful with wheeling. I suppose you do on a clod, but I've never really ran into that issue, I guess, when I've driven someone else's mod clod. Yeah, I've ran into the wheeling issue before, but you can generally kind of tune that out with your radio and kind of take your throttle out just a little bit so you're not popping a wheel stand up in the air. Um, the big thing, though, like I said, is I just I believe the clods, are they, they turn better. As mm -hmm. far as when they've got more power behind them, they turn a little bit better with a little more limited steering. And it's it's a weird thing to come out of somebody's mouth when they say that. But at the same time, it works. <laughs> well, I think it's important also to talk about ProMod this year. There's something very important that's going to be added to the class. You know, it has for the most part been traditionally it's been to my cloud buster for the longest time. It was to my cloud buster. But um, in recent years, you've got modified axial SMT-10s and a lot of just shaft trucks. You have the freestyle trucks that yeah. run in this class. You have the um, ACRC, which is axial-based. But there's a lot of, of built shaft trucks. That's what I mean, I guess. You see a lot more shaft trucks. Well, now the Lozy LMT. This is the LMT class. I know we have a spec class, but the guys, this is a, it's a turnkey pro mod, so you can run it in either, especially, I can tell you, I've run those pro line tires. I haven't written about it yet. Um, those pro line tires, boy, they really wake up the LMT. And I, I, I've heard, I think Jay concept is going to have some stuff out for him soon. So those, I mean, really outside of the pro mod, you get the, the tires on it. The LMT though is ready to rock and that is a pro mod truck. So it's going to be real interesting this year to see where does that fill in, you know, fit into the ecosystem. You were talking to our friend, Tony, uh, CCRX, and he uh, he ran those recently, right? They just had a race yeah. with the LMT. They just had a race over at the Digger's Dungeon, and Tony CC ran the LMT class. He ran Pro Mod. He ran Retro. He ran just about every class they had there, and I had him on an Instagram Live the, live the other night, mm -hmm. and Tony had mentioned that his LMT with the demolisher tires on it in the LMT class that they had there ran a time about three seconds faster than the pro mod trucks were running, which the pro mod class down there was based like what we were talking about with the clods, the SMTs, the freestyle trucks. It's just astonishing to think uh, that that out of the box truck with just a modded tire thrown on it could be that fast. I'm not surprised though. Again, having mine, like they're very controllable. And I think even in our, our club, the, a lot of times the sport mods run pretty close as far as racing times. Freestyle is a different, a different story, but as far as racing times go, the sport mods normally aren't off time that much with the pros. It's way closer than you would think because the pro mod trucks a lot of times are just so hard to handle. That's, yeah. Yeah. You, that's where you, you got to have, uh, you got to have some grip in your pro mods out there. And there's, there's a lot of tricks to get that grip. With me, it's been the, the crawler innovation foams inside the blue compound J, J Concepts Renegade tire. That's where the grip comes from. It gets, put, puts a bigger footprint on the ground with the closed cell foam. That's where that foam really shines is in the Pro Mod class. Doesn't quite necessarily do it in Sport Mod because you're not really getting as much air as you are in a Pro Mod truck. You can peg a Pro Mod truck in a racing track down a straightaway 
jump and land with these with these particular foams in your tires and be set up for a corner. Uh, that's part of the tuning ability in, inside of a pro mod that really helps. You got to understand what stuff helps with the higher speeds and the higher jumps. Yes. So my nuclear banana truck, I actually have those crawler innovation foams. Now it's a sport mod, but I really need to just spend the money and outfit all my trucks with it because that it's such a difference in how it handles. And I'm not even jumping that high, you know, to where it just, you can land and immediately be on throttle. And I know that you guys, again, Bob too. I know Bob C is big on those that he's got. There's a lot of people running the closed cell phones now. Um, but pro mod trucks, when they do get the air, that's like a lot of what the races are actually is who can recover from the jumps because a lot of times guys hit stuff too hard or if it's not too hard, the way the truck comes down can still just put it out of whack because there's so much power behind it. Mm -hmm. And you find a lot of guys too. The problem with wheelies isn't when they're like from a dead stop. It's they get under power too soon or something and throws the front end up and you have rolls and everything else. And yeah. And you can see that in the intro for our, our trigger King videos now with mine and Bob's race from a couple of summers ago where we both slap wheelie going to the finish line. Oh yeah. That pro mod trucks for slap wheelies are crazy because there's just oh, yeah. ludicrous power on tap with these things. And another uh, thing too, especially as you get later in the day with a pro mod truck is kind of a war of attrition you're going to have breakage in these trucks more so. I know that uh, these are the trucks that are more bulletproof in general. You bulletproof the axle components and everything, but still shaft trucks like to throw drive shafts, even in my P1s from time to time. And the clods like to melt gearboxes. And melt gearboxes, melt gears, rip teeth off, destroy pinions, you name it, you can do it in the clod. The main breakage, though, you're going to see is the knuckle mm -hmm. and the uh, axle tube. Yeah. Oh, it's always a two. And, but it's funny though, that clods, it's not uncommon on a race day to you hear gear noise as the day goes on and on and chattering because the clods, once the gears start to go in one of the gearboxes, you can run them, you know, till they go, but normally freestyle will kind of kill it. And you'll see, I mean, literally we're joking. We're, sit, we're, well, we're not joking that you will melt the gears on a clod buster. Like they will <laughs> cease to be gears. Yeah, if I could find, uh, I've got a set of gears in here somewhere in this hobby room. It's a mess right now, but <laughs> if I ever find those gears, I'll post them on my RC page and show you guys just how how badly you can melt a set of gears on a clod buster. And it can happen with just it being slightly out of mesh or you take a really bad bounce. And some of those gears do move around in there. The spider gears are sitting on a, a little shaft inside there. They kind of move around. If they get bound up even slightly, then you're going to you're gonna lose drive in that axle. Yep. And it seems like that's another thing too with these trucks that uh, that happens a lot of times, especially guys with a dual motor, the clod setup, is that a lot of times after hard hits, it seems like sometimes one motor will stop for a minute and you'll you'll lose front wheel or you'll lose rear wheel drive. Yeah, and that, that happens mainly because the electronics get jarred and they're like, wait a second, what the heck? It's almost like they, they get hit really, like a boxer that gets hit really hard. They're like, wait, what? Oh, okay, okay, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, ring the bell. <laughs> that, yeah, it's funny. That it, that does happen, especially more so in freestyle because that's where you just see the insane, you know, like I don't even know how high some of these trucks are going, 30 or 40 feet in the air probably. At least, I, well, I don't know actually. How high do you think one of our pro mods do get? Like at least 20 foot, I know. Well, I, I, the biggest jump I ever did was over that camper that we did here a few years ago. Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't even tell you how high up in the air that was. That was at least 25, 30 feet. I would, yeah, I would guess it's tough because these are RC trucks to use the scale, but I know at least they can jump 20 feet. And I guess the whole point, a, though, is when they come down from that, they'll. There's like height meters out there we can get and plug into one of our trucks and just try it out this this year and see how high we can get off of that big one we should i'd like to see i'm just curious because we do have that big pyramid and you have some of the real big power guys that just can launch up but as you're saying though kind of like the boxer analogy when it comes down sometimes you do have the trucks just do crazy stuff for a minute because that shock for whatever reason that shock the truck just doesn't like it the electronics don't like it and it takes a minute oh yeah they don't, they don't like it at all. And I had a lot of those issues last season <laughs> as far as electronic issues and pro mods go. I remember that you were sort of punched, you know, I guess punch drunk. I don't know what you were snake bitten with your electronics a lot of times last year. Yeah, I think yeah. what happened was, is, and I, I have a photo of this, Gene Patterson snuck into my pits and put a little snake venom in my trucks. 
And that that's that's what caused the issue. It sure felt like it for a lot of the year. You just were you had a rough go of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else really to say. So, you know, I guess about pro mods, there's so many different kinds. It's more the clod and shaft truck thing. I'd like to when we are at the race, Josh, you and I do kind of a, a version of this show in person where we maybe talk about a couple of the, you know, shaft first clod or something like that in a little more detail where we can actually show some of the builds in person. Yeah, bring in some people and have them talk about their builds, show off some of their pro mods. I'd love to do that for sport mod as well as retro as well. Yeah. Just bring in a couple of the new builds and have people talk about their stuff. Yeah, kind of like we we used to do on here. I would do some spotlights, but um, we'll have to do that as sure. We're going to have long race days. I'd imagine we're going to, you know, this first race is probably going to be, assuming the weather's good, we're going to have a ton of people out there. It should be a lot of fun. I've seen the track layouts. I don't know if you have, Josh, but we're going to have two cool. We're going to have an S. I think you might have come up with that at one point or part of it, but we're going to do an S layout and we're going to do the J and in that's for the, the fast trucks. And I think we're doing a J I forget next week. We can talk about it on the show. Actually, maybe we talk about it, but um, I'm hoping this year too, we could maybe turn it over to some fans out there to maybe suggest some tracks we can vote on or have some kind of contest on this show. That'd be fun. Yeah, that would be fun as well. Throw, throw them out there and see what people vote on for us to run. I mean, it'd be something that no other club has done is to have the, the fans of the series come in and say, hey, you know what? We want you guys to run on this. It's going to directly affect the points championship. But you know what? It might be a little fun to see some guys come out there and uh, give their input on what we should run. Yeah, it'd be fun to see it. I do know we're not, we weren't going to do it for this opening round of it just because I don't want to kind of do that right away. But we never last year ran a Louisville figure eight on the whole we had all that room. I, I cannot wait to run a Louisville track this year. Well, we did a figure eight last year, but it wasn't really a Louisville one. It was a real flat style figure eight. Yeah. I remember that the eight, but it wasn't, again, it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the traditional like Louisville style. Yeah. It was a really tight corner and a really, honestly, even the, the outside lane was really tight on that as well. If I remember right, that was almost more of an hourglass kind of a thing versus a. Uh, yeah. Pretty uh, close. What I think of an eight, whenever I think of a figure eight, I think of a big round sweeping high speed corner. And I, I remember when we ran the other one, it was a fun layout, but I remember that corner was kind of tight that you had to like hit an apex of it. And that's not mm -hmm. normally what the eight I'm thinking of. So I, I would love to do that at some point this year, but I'm just pumped and I can't wait to get ready to race. I know this weekend I'm spending time kind of finishing my truck. As soon as we get off here, I actually have to go to the hobby shop to pick up some parts for one of my trucks. And, uh, I guess yours are all together for the most part, right? I know you did. Yeah, they're it. almost all together. There's one that I want to build up. Uh, I might give a little preview of it right here. If you know what these flames are, there's a re certain retro that's coming down the line. I'm going to hopefully have Bigfoot four and Gravedigger number two out there. I got a regulator that I'm wanting to get. I need to get, actually, I need to finish placing the order and get that truck started and built before uh, we go racing next weekend. Yeah, you don't want to get behind in points. Last week, or last year, the regulators didn't debut until like mid-season. So this year, you're, especially anymore, I think we've got seven events lined up this year for the points. And uh, we do a throwaway like a, so you can miss a race and you get your lowest point total for an event thrown out. But it's still, it's um, it's so hard to try and win if you've missed an or if you right away, if a chassis misses an event, it's like you've already given away your lowest total. So it makes it really tough with how tough all the guys are that run with us this year or that the run with us year in and year out. And I have a feeling that this year we're going to see some new faces, some people that are planning to travel and everything in that maybe race a race or two with us. So it's going to be even tougher. I think of a point series. I can't wait. Yeah. I think it's going to be one of our best seasons we've ever had. We're going to see some guys come in that we haven't seen before. We're going to see some trucks that we haven't seen before. We're going to see, the introduction of a vehicle that nobody's really sure what it can do in a pro mod class. I mean, I'm really looking forward to it because I'm, you know me, I'm, I've been a stat guy. I always enjoy the stat stuff. That's why I do the podcast that I do. That's why I had the job that I did for monster jam for a little while. I really enjoyed seeing, well, okay, this guy performs a little better here than he does on this track. It, it's stuff that runs through my mind and it really makes me happy as I knock my little skull off my microphone here. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it's and something I, I can't I can't really wait for, and I'm I'm really going to enjoy this year. Same here. I can't wait to just get out there and do it again. The LMT, there's been so much bench racing. I know now that there are some clubs that have ran it once or two, one or two times, but it'll be interesting when we get those LMT out there in brackets of like 
you know, probably 50, 60 trucks at some point. And we're really going to see manufacturer wise, it'll be interesting to see who kind of comes up, you know, comes out top, especially in pro mod. Yeah. And one thing that we're different than a lot of other clubs, there are clubs that are not allowing the LNT in their pro mod class. I believe, like I said, Tony had an LNT class that he had to specifically run his LNT in. Pro mod was completely different. So with that said, we could be opening up a lot of clubs eyes with the fact that we're running the LMT inside our pro mod class. And we're the first guys that are going to be doing it. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Again, we're not, if, if something competitively is massively off, I mean, we're, we'd be okay. I'm sure with changing something, but right now I just like, I like the variety. I actually, again, I view it like pro modified racing and drag racing where you have the turbo cars versus the, the, uh, nitrous cars versus the blown cars. To me, that's the, not a perfect analogy, but that's the way I view it. There's three different chassis configurations with, you know, center diff and you have the shaft drive and then a uh, mo- the clod, the motor on axle. And um, it should be a war in the class. I, I'm really excited to see what it is. My rotten apple three truck is going to be a, a havoc truck. I think I'm, I'm looking to, to start building that. I, I wouldn't mind a second LMT though. I'm just not sure what I'm going to do really, but at some point I'll have a second pro mod this season. Well, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Be soon. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you know, that's it. Um, just a little plug here, I guess for Josh's retro monster truck review podcast. I'm on it this week. We spent, I don't know. I don't know how long the final show is, but Josh and I talked like two and a half two hours. hours. Last week. I got it down to about two hours. It's it's going to be quite the show. We get to talk about, uh, like we had mentioned on this broadcast previously, uh, the, th- the triple lane uh, stadium in Houston. We did, or excuse me, in Dallas. And we got, we talked about that for about two hours and I really enjoyed it because that, that weekend, I, I swear to God, that's the most energy charged weekend in monster truck racing history, just from all the stress that those guys had to go through just to get to that event. And there's a yeah. certain truck that's banned that we talk about as well. Yes, that was the banning of a very certain uh, truck that's being rebuilt right now. Actually, if today, the racer stripe, I saw that Bigfoot was teasing that. But you had the banning of that truck. You had massive drama, an event that was a demolition derby, a market that TNT hadn't run in, three wide monster trucks for the first time. It's just, yeah, we the talked for a long TNT time. field to date. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was fun. That's that's my probably my favorite classic monster truck event of all time, or one of them. At least it's my favorite to talk about because of the crazy scenarios and way the industry kind of pivoted after that. So anyways, if that's not enough of a tease, check it out this week. Uh, this show is going to be live um, right before Josh. Josh puts these shows live on Friday morning. So the Retro Monster Truck Review from Dallas slash Irving, Texas, 1990, the three wides at uh, Texas Stadium. That's going to be live right around when you can uh when you see this so check it out if you haven't it's a good podcast anyways josh's show i always love to to listen to listen to it every week oh yeah doug's always messaging me and saying what are you covering this week i want something to watch tonight i know i (laughs) I, it's like a a book club it gives me an excuse to watch these other races on youtube just so i can prepare for the discussion to listen to the discussion i'm thankful to be have been on it now a couple times but it's fun to just uh to just listen to it too and i guess also check my big squid rc dot com monster truck madness column that goes live and hey we're going to be racing here really soon on trigger king with a season a brand new season full of stuff josh and i will be out at the events do some of these shows where we're not just at our benches here we'll have some good stories to talk about i'm sure he and i are going to meet up in brackets a lot of times over the summer just you and chris Parrish. i feel like i'm always racing every event so that's all i got josh anything else you want to say no, I'm good, man. Uh, if you guys want to head over to Josh Dig Roads on Instagram, give me a follow and see the content that I got over there. Josh Rhodes RC Racing on Facebook. And until then, we'll see you guys on the tracks across America. <laughs> All right, Richard Lee. All <laughs> right. Hey, thank you everybody for watching here. And uh, we will see you really soon. <laughs>